Once upon a time, two friends joined forces to bring you the best in horror entertainment. Brian from the north, Tim from the south, each bringing their own unique perspective to the horror community. Movie reviews, Blu-ray releases, beer pairings, games, and more. Welcome to your new home for horror. This is Civil War. Hey there, everybody. Welcome to the Civil War Podcast. I'm your host, Tim. And this is Brian, and this is part two of uh, the epic... And I mean epic October dismemberment of 2023. There is like this. I think this next this first week's not too bad, but no. week number th- I guess three, uh, four of the month, two tonight is over 20 titles. That is yeah. like ridiculous level of t- and like they're not like no featured titles either. Like these have things on it. So we're gonna try and go through this fast. <laughs> yeah, not we made some until, of these that are. Some of these that are like reissues, we may have to like. We'll, we may skim through them a little bit if you if we know that you guys know them. Kind yeah, of, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, yeah. So so anyway, we'll see how it goes. Uh, so these are the Blu-ray releases for the week of October seventeenth, and we're going to kick things off with a an oldie but a goodie. I love this movie. Yeah, The Blob Four K. This is coming out from Shout Factory. I feel like this came out not too long ago. It did. I have the I have the regular Shout Factory version um of it and it's it's got special features on it. They probably just didn't update it for this one. You know, they probably yeah. have all the same ones. So, which is good for our case in this this uh this round. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think this is one of the best horror remakes of all time. It uh, is. And you know, I I mean it, it has a cult following that I I feel like it's not even I, I like I feel like it still doesn't get the overall respect of being such a good remake. You know, I think yeah. it gets forgotten for some reason. I think because so many people, there's like this generation that thinks it was an original <laughs> when it came Prob- out. Probably. I mean, but, but, you know, what a great movie to remake because, of course, the 19th, this is a remake of the 1958 version. And that was, of course, you know, kind of cheesy back in the time when they had those B monster movies. So it was really d- due for a remake that was actually scary. And the special effects on this still hold up today. I mean, 1988, I don't care. I don't think any amount of CGI could replicate how good the effects are in the Blob remake. It yeah. still looks terrifying. So. I mean, and this this has, yeah. of course, like one of, one of the horror uh, legends here. Like, not as big as some of the other legends, but it's got Shawnee Smith, of course, from the uh, uh, Saw franchise. Yeah. And it's got Kevin Dillon, who's hilarious in this thing. Yeah. Um, it's got Candy Clark. It's got, you know, it's got a lot of people you'll recognize, too, from the, uh, definitely from the 80s. Era, you know, like era. It's got Bill Mosley is in a small role in it. It's got a lot of people. It's definitely one I, 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 I think, and we've done it on the show. Um, I think yeah, it's yeah. definitely one that uh, if you have not seen it, this is, or you don't own it, this is the time to get it while it's on a, a 4K upgrade. Yeah, I don't think I actually have have this one, so I will probably be picking this up because I think I bet you this looks incredible in 4K. Oh yeah, probably. I mean, I have to tell you the regular version of it. I I remember when we watched it for the podcast. I I remember being impressed on how good the the quality was on just the regular Blu-ray version. So I yeah, I think you're right. I think this will be nice uh nice upgrade. Um, speaking of uh 4K upgrades, that is like the new thing, of course, this year. This one's from Lionsgate, and that is the Wicker Man 4K 50th anniversary 1973 version, not the the bees the bees version of Nick Cage, <laughs> which is a deleted scene, by the way. I don't know how many times I see people complain. They're like, "Where's that scene? I don't see it." It was the, most of the time it's deleted. You need to find, I think, the unrated cut, and even then, I think it's not always in there it's like sometimes it's like a special feature it's funny oh. but anyway that is not this version this is the original and uh so in case you didn't know it's a police sergeant travels to a remote scottish island in search of a missing girl whose town folk claim never existed stranger still are the rights that take place there and uh this has some a couple of little features here it's got the new 4k restoration of the final cut of the film revisiting the locations feature at the wicker man at 50 robin hardy's script the lost ending brit Eklund interview behind the scenes gallery wicker man enigma burnt offering the cult of the wicker man interview with robin hardy and christopher lee that's got to be a good uh interview there yeah uh worshiping the wicker man the music of the wicker man I almost like read that backwards, like the, r- the wicker of the music man, and I feel like Robert Preston's going to come in and get lit on fire. Uh, the, mu- <laughs> the interview with Robin Hardy, a new one, this one, well, newer from 2013, not the the 79 version, uh, trailer and restoration comparison. Yeah, this is one of my favorite movies and uh, from the 70s, and uh, it's definitely another one that I don't own. So this would definitely be a good pickup. Also, a rare movie that has a horror, uh, a horror movie that has a roller coaster. Remember the uh, the one in uh, 
Was it Alton Towers or Blackpool? I don't know. We've, our coaster friends are killing us now. That's how out of the coaster game I've been. Like, yeah, that's right. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's – is it Alton Towers or Blackpool? I don't know. One of the two. But um, it might be neither. I don't know. Shame on me for my, my – I'm going to lose my coaster cred. <laughs> uh, I can't help it. You know, We've had a lot of horror stuff to go on. But anyway, there's that really cool roller coaster um, – uh, with like, yeah. where you actually go through the flaming uh, thing on a wooden roller coaster, which has got to be a That's little disconcerting. Cool. But yeah, yeah I, really cool. How cool is that? I was so excited when they announced that coaster because it's just the theme is so cool. Yeah, and I think the only other really like one ba- uh, coaster based off of a horror property is the Saw coaster, and I, yeah. that's like one I have a feeling that like years later might just get get uh, renamed to something else. <laughs> when, Probably yeah. when when Saw is long forgotten. <laughs> uh, of, although not to us horror fans, but um, but uh, you know to other people, uh, it may you know the rate the standard fare of people. Um, oh, it is at Alton Towers. I was right the first time. Okay, good. Well, there you me. go. Good job. All right, I my coaster cred is intact. <laughs> Just a mere doubt. Okay. Um, next up is from Lionsgate, and this is Talk to Me. This is one I really wanted to see. Uh, this one came out. It says 2022. I guess it came out last year. Um, when a group of friends discover how to conjure spirits using an embalmed hand, they become mm-hmm. hooked on the new thrill. Until one of them goes too far and opens the door to the spirit world, forcing them to choose who to trust, the dead or the living. And, uh, yeah, Brian, you said this one is already Yeah, out, I, I just got my copy, like, the other day it came. Okay, um, so this one um, it, this one could have been could have been either moved up or, uh, I don't know if this is a different version. Is yours a 3D well, the, set? No, mine's, mine's the regular standard version. This is the 4K, so this could have been out. This oh, might okay, have been okay. to, uh, come out a little bit later. I think mine was a week ago, a week or two ago. This is... Uh, yeah, this one's out. Uh, this might have just been delayed because it's a three disc set, so it's got a lot of extra stuff to it. Oh, gotcha. Okay, so yeah, this one has uh, Talk to Me Q and A with filmmakers Danny and Michael Filippo. Uh, <laughs> Filippo, I don't know. Uh, Amazon exclusive content. Audio commentary with co-writer director Danny Filippo and director Michael Filippo. Hmm? In the grip of terror, I guess they're brothers. I guess. I guess. Uh, so. In the grip of terror, featurette, deleted scenes, and theatrical trailer. I, I really want to see this one, but I don't know much about it. I've kind of avoided it because of spoilers. So uh, that's. Yeah, I know. I mean, I'm definitely going to watch that. Uh, I think I'm going to watch that over the uh, the next couple days. Um, yeah. This one, uh, okay. Now, this one, obviously, I still never seen the series. Tim's tired of it, uh, but it's Loy- Lo- Lo- Lionsgate. I must have said Lionsgate, <laughs> The Walking Dead, the complete collection. Uh, 2010 to 2020, 20, uh, to 2022. But here's the amazing thing. This has got 54 discs set. 54 discs. When do you hear that? That's like, ridiculous. With the Soprano one, that giant <laughs> Soprano set wasn't even that much. I think it was like 30 discs. That's the most I ever heard, but 54 discs. Uh, and I put meh as a thing because I really – no, it's just because I, I haven't watched it. I'm sure I'll like it. Um, it's a good – it's a it's a really good show. I mean, I mean, I totally enjoyed it up to a point, but it got to the point where it just – it was it felt like it was the same show over and over and over again every season. And I, and I just got tired. I just got burned out on it. I think it, if that show had maybe quit after like six seasons, I think it would have been like a masterpiece. Yeah. But well, plus they made all the extra ones, like the, the, yeah. the variations, and it's like you know. But of course, like our uh, one of our one time guests, uh, Addie Miller, was a big uh, to do there because she was the first zombie ever seen in that show. Mm-hmm. So. So that that that's some kind of cool iconic little thing there. Uh, anyway, uh, it's got uh, of course with that many discs, it better have some special features. Surprisingly, uh, it it thank God they did and they didn't list each one, but it's basically it's new behind the scenes documentary is the newest thing, which is the Walking Dead making of the final season, which is probably kind of a cool thing. Probably I, I like those like those finale yeah uh, things where it's like the final season because there's a, little, a lot of little heartwarming elements and you know memories and cool stories they tell um the additional bonus features though are all from the previous releases so you can go back and uh, listen to those or look up just a single season it's pretty much just standard fare of releases just on each probably disc or each season has its own collection uh that brings us to my pick of the week oh, yeah. oh but by the way there was also a godzilla versus kong oh, yeah. 4k steelbook by the way another side tangent sorry but i read an article today that best buy is going to phase out physical media yeah by and cone 20, told me that 25 too. i think yeah so they're um you these best buy steelbooks will no longer be a thing anymore uh, after a yeah. couple of years so it's kind of that's just kind of sad that like you're not going to be able to go 
you know, like Best Buy was like, I mean, I haven't gotten into a Best Buy to get a disc in forever. I'll just order it online just because it's easier. But, you know, it is kind of sad when you go into like, thank God Barnes & Noble is still so go- going so strong with their store. It's like I went in there the other day. I mean, they don't have much of a, a physical media section, but they still have all the games. They have the books. They have my Barnes & Noble out here in California, Tim. You'd like it. Behind the counter, there's a whole like section of, of uh, record albums. They sell yeah, it too. yeah. My, my Barnes & Noble has tons of records. I yeah, mean, they have a so- huge record selection. I think they're I kinda- having to do that, though, because I think book physical book sales are declining so bad because of ebooks yeah. that they're that bookstores are having to branch out into other things like my books a million store like they sell more things besides books than they do actual books yeah. seriously yeah yeah well i mean like in all honesty when i go to barnes and noble i go to the magazines i'll go um to the game section the toys uh i'll you know i'll definitely look at some books but you know what to me i just i I hate the fact, like, there was nothing more fun than going in, especially, like, I feel like it's even more fun at night, when it's, like, 8 or 9 o'clock, it's dark out, and you're in a bookstore that's all Oh, yeah. Late, and yeah. there's just, you're just walking around, you'll see some people literally, like, with a cup of coffee, sitting there reading something, and just going through, leafing through, walking through a bookstore, there's nothing like that, and, I, like, thank God for Barnes & Noble for, for finding a way to stay out there you know and still have these huge stores to go into like because that's nothing you know it's fun it's fun to go see something pull it put it in your hand and 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 open it up and leaf through it and it's just you know you don't get that yeah it's, it's easier online i get it because i'm a culprit myself mm. and i'll just order things online but i do love to go like stop at a bookstore every now and then especially like barnes and noble yeah, mine, unfortunately, is on the other side of town. If it wasn't, I would go there a lot more often. But uh, I have to go out there when I, whenever we're making a special trip for something else because I usually don't make a special trip just to go to the bookstore. But, yeah. well, man, when I do, I go in there every time. I don't care. The kids can complain. The wife can complain. I'm going in the bookstore, and I'm taking my time, and I'm looking around. I'm doing my thing because I really miss physical books. Yeah, well, I think Julie likes that, too, because we'll go in there and, like, we'll basically – see each other we'll like separate we'll almost like kiss each other goodbye all right we'll see you about an hour yeah because we both go off to our own sections and look around every once in a while we'll be back up again uh in the middle or something but then go off and look at our own things i love looking at those five dollar bargain books in there oh yeah i love all of it i love the whole uh, thing the whole experience i'll I'll tell you go barnes and noble stay strong (laughs) uh so my pick of the week is a criterion release and this is a neat one uh yeah you don't see this very often this is Todd Browning's Sideshow Shockers, uh, 1925 and 1932. Of course, Todd Browning is probably best known for his movie Freaks from yeah. 1932. But this one includes two earlier films, The Mystic from 1925 and The Unknown from 1927. I'm I don't really think I've heard curious. of The Unknown. I've heard of The Mystic, but I don't think I've heard of The Unknown. I'm... Yeah, so this one, this one, I'm, and I am a huge fan of the movie Freaks. So I just love yeah. that movie. And I don't own it, so I thought this would be a great way to pick up uh, you know, two other films I don't know of Todd Browning's. Yeah. Uh, Remember, though, they always, like, coming up, there's always that, like, uh, good sale, that Bar- speaking of Barnes & Noble again, uh, that yeah. they have that Criterion sale that Amazon oh, yeah. matches. So you may want to, even though it's the pick of the week and we highly recommend this one, you may want to wait a little bit and then, or, you know, wait until that sale. I think it's usually in November. Um, I know it's not on Black Friday, but it's around that time. I remember I, Tim and I stocked up. I got like, what did we get? Like Crimson Peak. We got Silence of the Lambs. Yeah, like, I got Silence of the Lambs. Don't Look Now usually appears on there. So remember, Tim, when that one gets your 4K release releases on that one again, keep an eye out. No, granted, the 4K ones are a little bit more expensive. So even at half price, you're probably looking at like 30 bucks. But still, I mean, that's a good deal for, you know, and rather than pay 60 yeah, yeah, no, no, it's definitely worth waiting for the sale because those Criterion 50% off sales are like clockwork. They're like the yeah. target buy to get one. They're going to happen. Just be patient. Yeah, and, and, ju- and the day they come out, like just kind of have your idea what you want, jump on it, order them. There you go. Yeah. Good to go. Uh, so the extras here are a new 2K restoration of Freaks with uncompressed monaural soundtrack, new 2K reconstruction and restoration of the unknown by the George Eastman Museum with a new score by composer Philip Carley. New 2K restoration of The Mystic with a new score by composer Dean Hurley. Audio commentaries on Freaks and the Unknown and an introduction to The Mystic by film scholar David J. Skull. New interview with author Megan Abbott about director Todd Browning and pre-code horror. Archival documentary on Freaks, which I'm really excited about. A reading of Spurs, the short story by Todd Robbins on which Freaks is based. Prologue to Freaks, which was added to the film in 1947. That's the... uh, that's the intro that's basically warning people about, you know, what you're about to see. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, yeah. See, I've only seen that way. Like, yeah. I think I've seen it that one. 
Yeah, a uh, program on the alternate endings to Freaks, video gallery of portraits from Freaks, and then an essay by film critic Farron Smith, Neem. Neem? Mm. Neem? Neem? Yeah, Nem, Nemi. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That would that would could have easily been my pick of the week too. But I figured one of us has to pick this one. Uh, <laughs> oh, had to. Yeah, yeah I had mean, to. I think this this is just works out great. I think, th- you know, we've had multiple picks of the week before, and this one I think it's a tie. Really, like this one is, uh, and this is by Severn Films with another one of their great sets. It's Cushing Curiosities, nineteen sixty. <laughs> does not come with a candle. Before you get excited, does not come with a candle. It smells like Peter Cushing. I know. Sadly. I checked. I went through sadly. all the extras. It's yes. not there. And Severn usually does those little odd things. Like, didn't one of them come with a head once? One of their <laughs> Like one of their box sets had like it a was, weird head. Yeah, it was Peter Cushing's actual skull. Yeah, it, it was, was his a, skull. It was yeah, a limited no, edition to one. But yeah. this this one does uh like it does it does come with his his bed sheets though. Uh no, only kidding. Uh anyway, and this is from Hammer Films to Star Wars. He remains one of genre films' best love actors. Now celebrates six of the most unexpected, rarely seen, and decidingly curious performances from the legendary career of Peter Cushing. Uh, there's a bunch here, so I'll try and get through them quick. Uh, first one is Cone of Silence, and not our good friend Steve Cone, and he's definitely <laughs> never silent. <laughs> That's right. Um, but uh, anyway, this is from 1960. It's a new K, uh, 2K restoration by British Film Institute. Newsreel of Peter Cushing and his miniature soldiers. I, I don't know what that is, but that oh, he was awesome. a, he was a big uh, miniature war gamer. Oh, was he? Now? I've seen uh, pictures of him in like some of my horror groups, but he had a huge collection of painted miniature soldiers and stuff, which is really cool. He's one of us. He's one of us. Yeah. He's one of our. I he's mean, a board gamer. I mean, I I feel like we could I could say this about a lot of people, Tim, because you're like anyone that knows Tim knows what a what a genuinely nice and friendly and fun guy to hang out with. But I think you would be really good friends with Peter Cushing. Oh, I think I, I could I, see I you I two like hanging out on game nights and stuff. Oh yeah, he was a nerd. He was he was a miniature yeah. nerd. So I like how do you it. not love the guy? I swear to God, he's one of he's one of like the and you know Grand Moff Tarkin does like in, amongst Star Wars fans he gets the the cred, but just overall as a villain, he how good he was in that. Yeah. You know, like and he gave no shits. He pronounced like Princess Leia's name wrong, and yeah, it didn't matter. He doesn't care. You know, yeah. he's awesome. And, and I think people saw through that he he was a villain, that, but they knew he was, like, really a sweet old man behind He the, is, yeah. The like, you just want to, like, pat his little head. And, yeah. Um, but anyway, so, uh, yeah, so there's that uh, feature. That'd be cool. Um, illustrated audio interviews. Peter Cushing on The Funster Show with Paul Carrington. Uh, see, there he's fun again. The Guardian interview with Peter Cushing. Peter Cushing interviewed by Tony Dalton, which I almost read as Tony Danza. Can you imagine that? <laughs> yo, yo, Peter. <laughs> Angela and I are uh, uh, going to have some lasagna or something. No, I don't know. That's terrible. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> probably it be, it be who's too. the moth? Well, he did. He cooked Italian food on the show. What do I? Say? What do, you know? What can I say? Um, uh, anyway, uh, it's Tony Dalton. Uh, yeah, which is not Tony Danza. Uh, author of Terrence Fisher, Master of Gothic Cinema. So that's pretty cool. Cushing's View, nineteen seventy three interview with Peter Cushing on Whistable and his. What does that mean? A uh, Whistable. <laughs> I, I don't know. know. Is that a show? I, I guess it's a person. I don't know. I have no yeah, idea I don't know. Maybe, yeah, you're right. Maybe it's a person. Something very and, British. And his late wife, Helen. Okay. Uh, oh, this, nice. The whole thing about his wife is really sad. Yeah. But anyway. Do you want me to like, do you want to trade off on these? Yeah, let's trade off. Okay. Uh, disc two is Suspect from 1960 and The Man Who Finally Died, 1962. Hopefully not mentioning, not about Peter Cushing. Uh, this has new 2K restorations of both films by, I think it's supposed to be Studio Canal, not Studio Probably, Canal. yeah. Uh, audio commentary for Suspect with Jonathan Rigby, uh, no relation to Eleanor Rigby, uh, author of English Gothic and horror historian Kevin Lyons. Yeah, and uh, Kevin Lyons, he's a repeat. He comes a lot. Um, he's basically, uh, he hosted a movie review show in college in the campus show called Inside the Lion's Den. And the fun fact is he is the heir to the Lion's restaurant chain. And another interesting fact, this guy's just full with interesting facts, by the way. It says when he gets together with John J. Johnson, Alan Barnes, and Jonathan Rigby to play golf, he he insists they call them the team the Fantastic Four, and that got cut off sadly, but I remembered it <laughs> <laughs> from reading it. So I, I love the ones where the film historians combine into like a super team. Those are my favorite. They do, right? I yeah. know. It's like like that would be like a great like like uh, like comic book series. Yeah. You know? Like you know, maybe they had the librarians that show. They should have yeah. the film historians. Yeah. You know where they great. just fight like evil with only the film facts that they've obtained over the years. You know. Oh, I love it. Uh, audio commentary for The Man Who Finally Died with Kim Newman, author of Anno Dracula, and Barry Forshaw, author of Brit Noir. Again, film historians that are just not becoming film historians at this they, point. They don't get a, a shout out. Yeah, they don't get a shout out unless it says film historian right. in the extra. They have to be exactly credited. I'm very strict about that now. 
right? This must be long because uh, it's disc three and four, and it's just Sherlock Holmes from 1968. But this one is like, the I think, the gem of the disc. Listen to this, right? So it's a newly remastered from BBC Tape Protection Masters. It's got audio commentaries for all episodes featuring Kim Newman, author of the Anno Dracula, Barry Forshaw again, author of Brit Noir, and David Stewart Davies, author of Starring Sherlock Holmes, A Century of the Master Detective on Screen. And this is cool. All available episode, or sorry, all episodes available with the BBC cl- countdown clock. So that must have oh. been something they did right before the show, like to count it down. How cool yeah, is that? That's like a very little cool. tidbit there. I might have to get this set, damn it. Uh, illustrated Peter Cushing audio interview again with uh, David Stewart Davies, and then Lost Segments with optional commentary by, again, Jonathan Rigby, author of English Gothic and horror historian Kevin Lyons. We don't need to read them again. We just um, read them. By the way, uh, Kim Newman's uh, book, Anna Dracula, is really good. I read it I read it many, many years ago. Oh, it's, nice. it's, a, it's like a modern, not modern, because it takes place in like historic times, but it's like like World War II Dracula. It's very cool. And did you go, Newman? When you yeah. <laughs> No, it's it's worth reading. I think there's a whole series. I, I think I just read the first one, but it's really good. Yeah. Um, disc. He looks like a vampire too. If you ever see him, he kind of he kind of looks like a vampire. He looks like one of those guys that I think thinks he's a vampire. Uh oh. Yeah, but um, I'm just I'm I'm completely speculating at this point. Hmm. I'm just I'm just I, I would like to believe that's the case. Uh, disc I'll, five. I'll go with it. <laughs> Speaking of vampires, disc five is Blood Suckers from 1971. Yep. New 2K restoration from the original negative, plus newly discovered bonus footage. Another audio commentary with Mr. Rigby and Kevin Lyons. Stranger in the City, 1961 short film by Robert Hartford Davis. Daddy's Girl, interview with director Robert Hartford Davis' daughter, Jean Hartford De- Davis. Bite Me, Tygon, Blood on a Budget, author John Hamilton on Robert Hartford Davis. The Trip, interview with uncredited drug orgy actress, <laughs> Francois oh. Pascal. Can you imagine if your yeah. claim to fame is the uncredited drug orgy actress? <laughs> I mean, wow. We've we've talked to a we've met a lot of people through the cons, through the podcasts, <laughs> through the things. It's probably worse you could be, in all honesty. But that I one, would, that one, I would actually be proud to wear that. Wouldn't you be cool if you had that like something on like uh, something that that like, like okay. out there as your title? New assignment for Cody. You need to find yeah. us an uncredited drug orgy actress to have for to interview for the show. Yes, we've never yeah, had. I don't one know on if Francois show. Pascal is still alive. Yeah, we we have never had an uncredited drug orgy actress. Yes, on the show. Cody, to my yes. to my knowledge, yes, we've had Cody, a lot of actresses. Out there. But yeah, yeah and, and not that we we we're not implying that you know them like on your Rolodex or anything. We know this is a <laughs> chore. We're not we're not trying to imply that you just know these people. This this is a task. This may be the hardest task we've ever assigned you. But. <laughs> We'd still appreciate every every little thing you could do. Watch her come back with one, too. She goes, I oh, know. Well. Oh, yeah, you should reach out to this person. Yes, my neighbor down the street. No. <laughs> you just said she didn't know anybody. I know. I was joking. Like it would be That would be the surprise that she did know somebody. I'm saying we didn't expect her to know it because we know, you know, uh, we, I mean, well, look, we don't, I, yes, we never met Cody in person, which hopefully we get to someday. That would, I think, be a very, a, yeah. a huge treat to At get civil, to meet Cody. A Civil Gore meetup, we will, yeah, we if we ever have a our... civil, civil Gore meetup, Cody better, we're going to work it around you, Cody. You're going to be there if we have to reschedule this thing 17 times. We will make sure you are there yeah. because we need, we need to see you. And, um, but, uh, yeah, so we, we, that, we don't, you know, we know her to the extent of, as we know online, but, so, but I know her. She's just someone that's so dedicated that, she, and I see the way she researches this horror challenge. If anyone can do it, it's going to be her. She'll find it. <laughs> uh, this one has a Freedom Seeker title sequence and a trailer. Okay, and the final one is this six Tender Dracula from nineteen seventy. Now it's nineteen seventy four. Now is this like bits of Dracula set up to like little chicken tenders, or is he just a, a sweet? more calm Dracula instead why, of bites you he just gives you little love nibbles on his why neck, does the on your neck. why do the movies from my birth year so weird like that was I, such really, a weird 70s year for you cinema. do yeah you get it's like they knew you were born and they're like we need to have like years later when Tim has his podcast I know he's just a, a an infant newly born infant now but we need to release a ton of stuff for his this year they so were years so later weird. yeah Tender and, Dracula. Uh, I don't even understand this it says new 2k restoration of the film by path I don't know what that is. Probably some kind of restoration company. Yeah. Um, then, of course, that the the obligatory audio commentary with Jonathan Rigby, author of English Gothic and horror historian Kevin Lyons. Love me tender, Dracula. Interview with director Pierre Grunstein. That, that featurette's 
title yeah. like named does it itself. you think it sings does elvis come on he goes love me tender <laughs> love me sweet let me bite your neck okay um sorry that's terrible uh menez of speaking i'm not sure what that is but interview with actor bernard menez and a trailer and uh, while you were reading yours i looked up for us get this so right now you can pre-order it and save 30 percent on that cushing uh set from severin films which i think i might do uh this week it not only does it have the thing it's got uh six bbc teleplays on there somewhere must be in there uh, a 200 page book Ooh. and this the special features we all mentioned uh come up to about 16 hours and the box art for this is perfection he's sitting there like in like his like like I, I I'm trying to describe what this is. It's almost like his um his like finest like suit with a little red bow tie, and its artwork is drawn. So it's like a painted version of him with a little cappuccino cup. Oh my exactly god! Exactly how I expect it. to like if he invited us over and his like servant brought us into him. That's how we'd find him. And he's slight. He has this look on his face like he's slightly amused that we're there. Yeah, like he's like, like you finally found me. I've dreamed of this day. That's an excellent price, uh, ninety bucks. Yeah, I might have to get this. The box art alone is just like I don't know who did it, but it is like gorgeous box art. Yeah, it's really good. By the way, look at the cover for Tender Dracula. It's Peter Cushing as Dracula with his fangs out and everything. It's all in red and a bunch of naked cartoon people. <laughs> now I have to see this movie. I swear to God, I'm order. I think I might order this set as soon as we're done today. Oh, Not the Euro- I have I have fifty other things on order this month, but the yeah. um the Eurocrypt of Christopher Lee box set, which I have. Uh, yeah, you don't the, have the second one. The do you? second one is down to seventy bucks. Oh, you got to grab that. Ah, I mean, that's oh, tempting. there's another. I don't know which movie this is from, but there's an actual actual image where there's like twenty naked women forming like a like a pyramid. That must be what? that orgy actress. What was in Cushing? There. What was Peter Cushing doing? I don't know, but there's like full on like nude pictures about I describing this thing here. I didn't know that about Mister Cushing was a naughty. I know. Man, there, there's why his smirk is there. That's right. He That's did. his He's smirk. Got... He's like, you're about to find out that I like boobs. <laughs> I keep a drug orgy in the back library. Uh, yes, and one of your listeners, Cody, will find it. <laughs> you see, I did a little Grand Moff talk in there in the middle of it. Okay. Uh, all right, all right. So we, let's, okay, all right. okay. We got. We didn't even go to a long week yet. Oh God, help us! Oh my God. Recap: October seventeenth, we had the Blob four K, Wicker Man four K fiftieth anniversary, Talk to Me four K. At some point, I'm hoping we could just drop the four K because everything will be in four K. Seriously, uh, soon. The Walking Dead complete collection, which is a bazonkers fifty four disc set. Uh, Brian's pick of the week was Cushing Curiosities. Uh, and I feel like we have more curiosities just after reading about it. <laughs> yeah, after we saw the naked pyramid, we were even more curious than we were before. Yeah, and then uh, lots of curiosities. Uh, my pick of the week was Todd Browning's Sideshow Shockers, which is three early films from Todd Browning. I mean, that's great sets. That that's this is an expensive week if you want to jump into things. But not next week, com- at least you kind of you don't get you get a reprieve in the sense that there's a lot of movies that literally nothing like not many jump out as I must have that. I mean, right. well, maybe like two or three tops. I think the rest are just like some re, like redo titles and some obscure titles that. Yeah, and there, there's one on here. Actually, I almost want to change my pick of the week because I just realized that I saw it. Um, I'm going to change it just for fun. Since so, so. Yeah, why not? It's, it's fun when we have separate pick of the week. Yeah, because I'm going to uh, keep mine because of a, of a, a funny reason that you'll. Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, I, it's also a great desk, but there's another reason behind I, I it. I originally picked uh, Brian's, but then I saw the one beside it, and I realized that's one of my favorite movies of all time. So I was like, "Ooh, I need to, I need to pick that one." Okay, so these are the Blu-ray releases for the week of October 24th. Obviously. Oh yeah, you know that, that yeah that and that was the one I said was the second one. Um, yeah, it's just I think it, the only reason I didn't pick it is because there's very limited features to it. I think that's why but, I probably didn't initially pick it as well but, but yeah it's a, it's one of my favorites too um but yeah this this week is you know this is the week before halloween so they're gonna just dump everything yeah. there's 22 releases this week it's just utterly ridiculous um there's four steelbooks coming out there's a godzilla 1998 4k steelbook a bone tomahawk steelbook of all things a yeah. color out of space steelbook a psycho gorman steelbook Oh, I love that movie. Cycle. That's a great movie. Well, yeah. you know, I mean, here's the thing, right? If Best Buy is getting rid of the the physical media and the steel book, and they've already pre ordered 18 million tons of steel, got to do something with it. Exactly. Start releasing everything they can. <laughs> They're like, hey, you got a movie? Uh, you want a steel book? 
The Bone Tomahawk surprised me. Not that it's a bad movie. It's a great movie. Yeah, but, very good gore. But too. even after it came out, like you could find that movie so cheap. Like you get the DVD for like 10 bucks. or Yeah, like I think blue. I bought it for like seven ninety nine at Best Buy one. Yeah, like it, it's just surprising that they, they chose that for a steelbook because it's always been kind of a budget title to me. Um, all right, so that still f- could be cheap. I mean, steel bo- steel books, you know, aren't yeah. that uh, I don't think they're that expensive to make. Really, I mean, it's steel. Um, the uh, the first one up here is is another one for your uh, Criterion sale at Barnes and Noble. Uh, it's a Criterion release of the Others 4K from 2001. While awaiting her husband's return from war, Grace and her two young children live in an unusually isolated existence behind the locked doors and drawn curtains of a secluded island mansion. I almost said seduced, but I don't think the mansion yeah. was seduced. I think you, it was you were thinking of uh, Peter Cushing and his, uh, his new pyramid. Yeah. Uh, when three mysterious servants arrive, it becomes frightening clear that there's far more to this house than meets the eye. Uh, this is a great movie. I remember watching this at the theater when it came out, and I was like kind of blown away by it. Uh, this has a new 4K restoration from the original camera negative. New, looking back at the others feature at 51 minutes. New, the music of the others. A look inside the others. Visual effects piece. Zero derma pigmentosum. What is it? That sounds like a medical uh, documentary. I was going to ask you that question, actually. <laughs> uh, an intimate look at director Hali- Alejandro Am- Aminabar, stills gallery, and trailer. Yeah. I, I may be mistaken. I don't remember there a regular version of this on Criterion. I could be wrong. Um... This but might be the first release on Criterion. It might be, and good, good for them, because uh, this is this is a title, uh, one of these really good titles that deserves to have uh, a good release to it. Uh, next one is uh, <clears throat> from Kino Lorber. It's Red Dragon in 4K uh, from 2002. Uh, of course, as XB, ex-FBI agent, Will Graham is an expert investigator who quit the Bureau after almost losing his life in the process of capturing the elusive Dr. Hannibal Lecter. Years, I still crack up at our, our sketch that time. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, years later, after a series of particularly grisly murders, Graham reluctantly agrees to come out of retirement and assist in the mysterious case. But he soon realizes that the best way to catch his killer, known as the Tooth Fairy, is to find a way to get inside the killer's mind. And the closest thing to that would be to probe the mind of another killer who is equally brilliant and twisted. For Graham, that means confronting his past and facing his former nemesis, the now incarcerated Dr. Lecter. Very nice. Uh, this has got uh, disc, uh, two discs. Uh, the first one is a 4K Blu-ray, a new 4K Master Struck from the original camera negative. Audio commentary by director Brett Ratner and screenwriter Ted Talley. Uh, Brett Ratner was he canceled recently? I don't know. I don't know. I, never, I thought he was very, very, very kind of arrogant. Anyway, yeah. I I, every time I saw his interviews, he always just seemed so like, like cocky. I don't know what it is. And then he got canceled, I think, because uh, I think uh, uh, was it Olivia Munn brought stuff out to him. I could be wrong. Sorry, I, I, I don't mean to like make everything a cancel culture. I'm just trying to. No, facts. he was. He was uh, canceled for he sure. He was. What? Yeah. Okay. I guess they uncanceled them for this release, but uh, isolated score with audio commentary by composer Danny Elfman. Uh, disc two is The Making of Red Dragon featurette, A Director's Journey, another, uh, it's like a 40 minute documentary, a visual effects featurette, screen and film test featurette, Anthony Hopkins, Lecter and I featurette, The Burning Wheelchair. Uh, it's another featurette. Uh, I don't know why these give all the times. They all don't do that. It's funny, yeah. this one does. Uh, the Leeds House Crime Scene featurette. Makeup Application featurette. Inside the Mind of a Serial Killer, hosted by John Douglas featurette. Is he a serial killer, too? That's why he hosted it? I don't know. Uh, it's got seven deleted scenes uh, with optional commentary by Ratner, Tally, and editor, edit, editor, editor Mark Helfrich. Uh, full, <laughs> it's supposed to be full for alternate scenes, but it's for... Erlernit scenes as it's I love the here, typos in these. Episodes. I know it's I just not Tim's copy, typos. No, I copy we and must paste reiterate them. for those new listeners: Tim does not make these typos. We get he so much humor out of the typos. I love it. It is. It's best that they left in anyway. Uh, with optional commentary by Ratner Tally and editor Mark Helfrich. Three extended scenes uh, with optional commentary by Ratner Tally and editor editor again Mark Helfrich. Uh, storyboard to final film comparison: Lecter's FBI and life history. Uh, notes, I guess, twenty five pages. Uh, <laughs> Is that a book, or is it like 25 pages of of digital? I don't don't know. know. Uh, Brett Ratner's student film, which is like he throws on every disc uh, that that he's part of. Even, I think, Rush Hour was like what he did. Was it one of the Rush Hours he did, I think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Anyway, yeah, he did. uh, That was on that disc, I remember, on that first uh, Rush Hour special feature. Uh, And then theatrical trailer. All right, next up is, this is a fun one, Kino Lorber's Cujo 4K 40th Anniversary from 1983. A friendly St. Bernard contracts rabies and conducts a reign of terror on a small town in New England based on the Stephen King novel. 
Uh, this is a great upgrade if you uh, if you don't have this one already or if you have got the original version. Um, this one has a new 4K restoration of the film from the original camera negative. Audio commentary by director Louis Teague. Audio commentary by director Louis Teague from 2013. The previous one was 2007. Audio commentary by Lee Gambin, author of Nope, Nothing Wrong Here, The Making of Cujo. This too is the Blu-ray, Dog Days, The Making of Cujo, interview with Dee Wallace, interview with composer Charles Bernstein, interview with stuntman Gary Morgan, interview with stuntwoman Jean Coulter, interview with casting director Marsha Ross, interview with visual effects artist Kathy Lawrence, interview with special effects designer Robert Clark, interview with dog trainer Teresa Miller, three TV spots, three radio spots, and a theatrical trailer. Ah, uh, our lovely D. Wallace. Yeah. Don't you wish Louis Teague was a uh, film historian? Because then you know he'd have a show in college called A Teague of Their Own. But uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just because I know he never will be one. I had to throw that yeah, in there. Yeah, that okay. that's pretty good. Uh, next one is Radiance Films. That might be new. I don't re- recall I don't that recall that one either, yeah. That could be new. Uh, anyway, and this Messiah of Evil from 1973. And Tim, this is the one where, like, I may, I sent you the meme about, like, because it had two uh, objectives just in the trailer alone. Well, technically, the year is one trailer. Well, see, I was uh, going to watch this one for my 1973 objective, but I've already seen it. I watched it last uh, year, I think. Yeah, I teamed it up with mine. Oh, my God. And I picked... It's because a cool I wanted movie. to do two movies, uh, for, you know, I wanted to do two objectives at least for as many movies I could find. Yeah. Uh, the my seventy three movie I picked is doubles another objective, and it's over three hours long. God oh me, my why god! Did I pick that, but it's a movie. It kind of sounds really cool that I want to see that you'll, I'll show you later. Uh, you know, off I don't want to give anyone a hint. Uh, anyway, uh, anyway, this is 100 years ago. A demonic priest from hell passed through a seaside town carrying a blood-crazed contagion that reduced all the good citizens to mindless cannibal zombies. Followed, following a frenzied, flesh-eating orgy. There's the orgies again. It's like the theme of the, the <laughs> week already. Well, actually, the month, because last week was another Well, one, one was a flesh uh, orgy. This one's a flesh-eating orgy. Right. Well, yeah, but there's another one coming up in one of the movies oh. I saw. Yeah. Uh, Fleshing orgy, the dark priest walks straight into the sea, promising to return a century later to lead a new zombie apocalypse. This time around, the vile contagion precedes him. As the spaced out followers gather on the beach, awaiting their master's return, the town is already in the grip of a carnivorous epidemic of madness. When innocent young Ar- Arlety? Arletty. 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 Okay. Uh, comes to town searching for a missing father. She realizes too late that the demon priest of the Blood Moon is coming for her. I feel like it's like this like cool old 70s movie mixed with like the these the group of people going like, Zoltan. You know, from like, <laughs> dude, where's my car? Yeah. No, um, I like this one. I, I really like It looks this really one. cool. It's, it's um, cool. I like this yeah, one I've never lot. seen it, so I definitely yeah. want to see it. I'm, I still could technically swap this if I can possibly find. I mean, it would just, what it would be is it would, well, one of my, my uh, you know, no uh no objective needed movies yeah i could have uh i could just like have that or something but we'll we'll see uh anyway uh this has got a new 4k restoration from the best surviving elements of the film from the academy film archive audio commentary by critics and horror experts kim newman and stephen thrower who are have taken off their film historian hats to put on their little uh kim newman must do nothing but audio commentary seriously like what what else is there time for yeah. With that schedule. Uh, archival interview with co-writer, director Willard Hyuk <laughs> by Mike White from the Projection Booth podcast. Do you say that like Hyuk, 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 like Hyuk. Goofy? Well, that's how it looks like. It's Hyuk. <laughs> I don't know how else to Gorsh. say it. <laughs> Gorsh. Gorsh, <Slayer>, Mickey. <laughs> Hyuk, Hyuk, Hyuk. Uh, yeah. Oh, God. Remember, Mike, why don't we make fun of... I'm, we're going to... Oh, oh, my God. I, I do not mean to make fun of people's names, but I genuinely love unusual names i genuinely I love it i love it's yeah. not it's not meant to disrespect or like make fun of I oh love, no it just brings not. me joy i love yeah, weird any, names. anyone that knows us knows yeah. that we like to pronounce things but, but, yeah like uh i'll tell you off air because i don't want to like you know like but uh what my my pr- new primary care physician you know now that i'm in a new state and new medical insurance i had to do all that like fun stuff you get to do when when you move uh to a wholly new area uh i gotta tell you my doctor's name you'll you'll get a kick out of that one yeah um but anyway uh so yeah but it looks like you but it's over next to the most most e- easy name like mike white <laughs> like next to and not the, I assume not the Mike White that uh, quarterback for the New York Jets uh, at one point. <laughs> anyway, uh, and another podcast, by the way. Uh, you know, all these people that like love our uh, love us that come on uh, and that release movies and stuff. Do they ever remember us when it comes time for these these 
disc release. They probably do remember us. That's why we're never on a exactly. commentary. I know. I you know, and here I thought I was I was uh I was making making friends and and that people would just love to hear more of us when when that was not the case. Um, anyway, um, <laughs> so go back to back to my lamenting. Let's go back to uh, the the rest of these features here. Uh, a new documentary in the film with more information to be revealed. <laughs> That's fun. And a visual essay on the American Gothic by critic Cat Ellinger. Uh, we got like the full gamut. We of got Kim and Cat. That's Kim and Cat. Oh, Kim and Cat stay alive, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, next one up is It, The Terror from Beyond Space. This is from Keno Lorber. It's a 1958 release. An Earth rescue expedition goes to Mars to rescue an earlier mission and finds only one survivor, the expedition leader, Colonel Carruthers. He is under... Yeah, I'm sorry. Wait, real quick, Tim. You know what I think of every time I see Carruthers? You just wait and see, Mr. Carruthers. I'm going to be mayor of this town. <laughs> sorry. I... <laughs> yes. Sorry. I can't resist. <laughs> he, is, he is under arrest and will face a... <laughs> Sorry, we'll I, I ruined him. For oh, man, no, that's all I can think of now. Yeah. Uh, he is under arrest while facing court martial on his arrival back on Earth. No one believes his fantastic story of a Martian monster that methodically killed all the members of his crew one by one until only he was left. On the return, what else did they think happened? Was he just making it up? Uh, on the return trip, however, they realize the monster is on board and living on the lower decks. It begins to attack the crew who quickly become concerned about their own survival. Uh, this that's one, very alien. Very uh, alien. aliens yeah. plots and yeah. uh, new two K restoration from a thirty five millimeter fine grain, N- new audio commentary by film historians. Oh wow, there's a lot here. Tom yeah. Weaver, Bob Burns, Larry Blameyer, and David Schechter. Yeah, well, I got information for every single one of them. Of course, Tom Weaver, we know he's he's Tim, one of Tim and I, he's uh, the nice our, guy. our favorite film historians because he he likes to go out at the Regal Beagle. Oh, that's <laughs> that's Tom Weaver. Okay, that's you. Tom Weaver. He's okay. the Regal Beagle guy. And remember, he once invited three random guys he met at the beach to join him on the commentary. And those guys were Phil Sunburn Benson, Marty Martin, and John Voight, the chiropractor, not the actor or dentist. <laughs> so that's why he's one of our favorites. He just hits every note. Yes, he is really for good. Us. Uh, then it's got Bob Burns. Uh, he's actually been here before, too, actually. We've heard him. He's a relative of Ken Burns and does all of his reviews in no less than 24 chapters. Uh, <laughs> alliterations and plosives are on point. Very direct. Speaks in one and two beats. I don't know where I came up with Oh, because Bob Burns. I was yeah, like, why Bob did Burns. I? See, I don't even remember the 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 the, the, uh, the benefit, like the, uh, the beginnings of where I come up with these things, the origin stories of these film historians anymore. Uh, next one is Larry Blameyer. Um, and, uh, <laughs> I'm cracking myself up. This is, was known for his relatively long movie reviews in the newspapers called Blah, 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 Meyer. <laughs> we're, the only, um, we're literally the only people that laugh at these. We are. Probably the only ones. And the best is just having, <laughs> it's even funnier knowing that Cody has to write this down I know. at some point. Uh, and then finally, David Schechter, uh, we, uh, he's another one that's been around. Uh, he was the one who wrote a really good blog called The Private Schechter. They expect results, by the way. <laughs> they do. You've never worked for The Private Schechter. He yeah. expects results. Yeah. And you said, Tim said that the other day in, a, in one of our, in our text feed. It was so perfectly timed. I was like laughing for like the rest of the night. It was uh, so well, I've got good practice because there's a buddy of mine that works for the government. Uh, not related oh. to the text feed, and I use that on him all the time. Like every time he talks about, oh, I'm taking vacation, and I'll like, say, oh, great, you're taking vacation. Well, you've never worked for the private sector; they expect results. I've I've done <laughs> that for years, so I've got really oh, good practice awesome. using that line. Uh, this has a new audio commentary. Right. Another film historian, Craig yep. Beam. Yeah, and he's one we've had before. He's uh, he's no relation to Justin Beam. Uh, Craig was at the top of his class as an expert in his film historian duties, dude. So they offered refer to him as the Beam of the Crop. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous. This uh, disc is the best disc ever, just for all these uh, things. I know, so many film historians. A new audio commentary by film historian screenwriter Gary Girani. Yeah, and remember, he's another one. This was early on because this was like almost every film story that we had had this kind of like little segment to it. Yeah, he was as cool as they come. Walks into a room and everyone just goes to him because he's just that cool. Likes to go by GG or Double G. Wears an open-chested velour top so his perfectly coiffed chest hair can have its moment to shine. He commands the room from his personality to his chest hair. Obviously a ladies' man. We, we, we went through a phase where almost every film historian was basically Frankie Avalon. I don't it know was. why. Yeah. Uh, why? Why? We we, were, like, I, 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 I'm glad we got better, though, yeah. at least. We got better. Um, Idbits. Ephemera <laughs> from Beyond Space. 
that sounds like a film story right there. Uh, Featurette yeah. by film historian Craig Beam again. Uh, theatrical yeah. trailer, reversible art, and limited edition O card slipcase. Yeah, we need. I think everyone needs to buy that disc just for that reason. Yeah. Uh, next one is Meg Two: The Trench, 4K from Warner Brothers uh, for 2023. Says so Jonas Taylor leads a research team on an exploratory dive into the deepest depths of the ocean. Their voyage spirals into chaos when a ma- malevolent mining operation threatens their mission and forces them into high stakes battle for survival. Pitted against colossal prehistoric sharks and relentless environmental plunderers, they must outrun, outsmart, and outswim their merciless predators. No mention of the Meg t- by name in there. Oh my god! And Tim, god. you saw this. You said it was horrible, but I will say this: I will watch, pretty much watch Jason Th- Statham kick ass in anything. I no, don't care what it is. It, it, I don't care if he goes up to a bunch of garbage men. I, I'll watch it. It's horribly fun. It's it's okay. So <clears throat> the movie's just completely ridiculous. I mean, completely ridiculous. Like it makes. The Fast and Furious, like later sequels, look like literally look like uh, you know, car talk documentaries. It's so over the top, ridiculous. Like they, the first movie, okay, it was kind of far fetched, but it wasn't like that bad. Like this one, they just gave zero f's. They just went like you know, we're gonna punch dinosaurs under underwater. That's what we're gonna do in this movie. Oh, and and they got crazy, okay. and they and they they drag this kid along. There's like this girl that's like no more than like 12 years old, and they drag her. Like there's people shooting each other. There's like dinosaurs eating people, and they're just dragging this kid along everywhere. Like she's just supposed to be there. And I, it just it's it's so ridiculous, <clears throat> but yeah, but it's also kind of fun. Yeah, that's, and plus Jason Statham. Come on. Uh, anyway, so uh, it's got two features on it: the making of Meg Two, the Trench featurette, and Up from the Depths, even more beasts featurette. Well, see, and also Jason Statham, he like he doesn't he he always goes a hundred percent. Like, oh yeah, I know I'm punching a dinosaur, but I'm gonna punch a freaking dinosaur. Yeah, and he he, he does watch it. me punch him. Watch yeah. me punch this bloke. And he, you know, he punches it. Like he's he's not he's not rolling his eyes. He's not phoning it in. I mean, he's giving one hundred ten percent to punching that dinosaur. Yeah, I so know. You, you, you got to always have respect for Jason Statham, yeah. man. All right. So number seven, Powerhouse Films, Fascination 4K from 1979. This er- Fascination. Okay, so this erotic horror film. Here we go. This, yep. this erotic horror film set in 1905 tells the story of a thief who seeks refuge in a castle owned by two women, Eva and Elizabeth. The women are seductive and teasing but turn out to be part of a vampiric cult of blood-drinking aristocrats. Okay, this is one of the lesbian vampire uh, craze, I guess, of the 70s. Uh, new 4K restoration by Powerhouse Films. Audio commentary with Sylvia Crystal from Emmanuel to Charol, author Jeremy Ritchie. Jean Roland introduces Fascination 1998 film appraisal. Rituals, updated documentary on the making of Fascination by Roland's personal assistant, Daniel Gouillet, including interviews with key collaborators Natalie Perry and Brigitte Lahaye. The musical. Oh no, Bridget LaHaye. That's a uh, Darcy's uh, member. She that's oh, really, like that's one of right. her favorite actresses. You're right. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. music of fascination. New presentation of an interview with composer Philip Durham. Newly edited archival interview with assistant director Natalie Perry. Critical. Oh, here's a new one. Critical appreciation by the author and film historian Virginie Salavi. Actually, well, we've had her. We've okay. had her on. Okay. Uh, yeah, she hosts a show about the hottest low budget films called The Floor Is Salavi. Uh, <laughs> It says also is confused with Virginia 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 Stevenson who lives in New York. So that Virginia Salavi now lives in California and goes by West Virginia, <laughs> and the other one goes by goes as just Virginia. So, uh, yeah. Alternate. I forgot about her. Alternate yeah. sequences, two extended sex scenes, original theatrical <laughs> trailer. Extended, uh, yeah, of course. Why of course, not? Why right? not? Uh, yeah. Hope you have widescreen, ladies. Uh, original oh. thing. <laughs> original theatrical trailer, <laughs> image galleries, promotional publicity material, and behind the scenes. Virgins and Vampires, documentary on Roland, produced and directed by Andy Stark and Pete Toombs. Pete Toombs, that's great. <laughs> yeah. uh, featuring contributions from actors Monica Swin and Bridget LaHaye, Nigel Wingrove of Redemption. Nigel Wingrove is about the most British freaking sounding name I've ever heard in my life. Of Redemption Films and Roland, new and improved English translation subtitles. A limited edition exclusive 80 page book with a new essay by Vanessa Morgan. An archival introduction by Jean Roland. A previously untranslated archival interview with Roland, an archival interview with actor Fanny Magier, critic Daniel Bird on the film's soundtrack, and full film credits. You know, I feel like it's a missed opportunity if he doesn't enter the room with going, rolling, rolling, rolling. <laughs> it's Jean, rolling, rolling, rolling. But, you know. 
Maybe that's just me. Uh. Uh, <laughs> next is Powerhouse Films Lifts of Blood 4K. This seems like to go hand in hand with yeah. this uh, fascination. It says an erotic, another erotic vampire film features a young man on a strange quest after rec- recognizing a castle on a poster. Okay. Uh, he seems to remember the castle from his childhood and eventually finds it with the aid of a strange woman dressed in white. It turns out that his family has been keeping the secret of vampirism from him. I do you hate that? It's bad enough when you finally have to tell your kids that, like, Santa Claus doesn't exist or the Tooth Fairies, you guys, you know. But now they're keeping vampirism I know. away. I mean, that should be, like, right off the bat, you know. Anyway, as Joe Bob would say, uh, lots of naked in this trailer. <laughs> The whole trailer is like full on, uh, like full on naked. You know, it's yeah. like not even like trying to like not have it. And I love how YouTube just does not care. Like they, they don't, they don't yeah. care if you just throw pure boobs up on the on the thing. It's like here you go. And wasn't there like a whole thing at one point where it was so big that they were gonna like moderate the content and everyone was all upset because they didn't. It was gonna be like automated and they didn't know. Like, oh yeah, stuff yeah. Like, yeah. No, no, they don't. They don't care. Yeah, obviously, if it's a trailer, they don't care. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, it's got audio commentary with genre film experts, critics, and authors Stephen Jones and Kim Newman. And they got everything but their film historian hat on in this one. Uh, selected scenes, audio commentary with Jean Roland, Roland, Roland. Uh, <laughs> the Beach That Follows Me. Roland reminisces about the beach in Yip and his <laughs> many experiences filming there. Uh, newly edited archival interview with Roland. Newly edited archival interview with actor and frequent Roland collaborator Natalie Perry. Newly edited, yeah. Newly edited archival interview with actor Jean Louis Philippe. You just said him, didn't you? Oh yeah, there's a lot of these two yeah, share a lot, a lot of, of uh, Philippe, extras. Yeah. yeah. Uh, newly edited archival interview with actor Serge Roland. So I guess that must be his relation of some sort. Uh, newly edited archival interview with actor Kathy Tricot. Critical appreciation and by the author and film historian again, Virginie Salave. Uh, original theatrical trailer, image galleries, promotional and publicity material, and behind the scenes, new and improved English translation subtitles. It's also an limited edition exclusive 80 page book with new essay by Maitland McDonough, archival writing by Jean Roland on the film, uh, oh, of the making of the film, archival interviews with Roland and Annie Brilliant. An analysis of an analysis of Suck Me Vampire, the hardcore film Roland May using scenes from Lips of Blood and full film credit. So wow. you're kind of getting like half porn here. Yeah. Mm. With uh, Lips of Blood, apparently. And then in case you wanted more than half porn, he took the rest and made it into a full porn. <laughs> uh, next up is from Film Masters. I don't remember them either. Uh, this is from this is uh, from 1959. Beast from Haunted Cave. In a skiing station in Dakota, a gang of criminals led leaded by Alexander mm. Alex Ward plans the heist of golden bars from a small bank. I'm just reading what? I'm just reading That's, this like it says. Yeah. While the lover of Alex, Gypsy Boulet, goes to an isolated cabin with the ski instructor Gil Jackson, a time <laughs> a time bomb explodes a cave to divert the attention of the locals and the gangsters steal the gold. This sounds like a Scooby Doo cartoon. It does. What uh, the heck? But the explosion releases a spider like monster, and due to a storm, the group becomes trapped in Gill's cabin and threatened by the creepy beast. This seems like so many things for a 1959 movie. There's a this lot going on. be in the 70s, yeah. right? Yeah. Like one of those 70s disaster films. Definitely a lot going on. New 4K restoration from the 35mm archival materials. Extended TV version of Beast from Haunted Cave, 72 minutes, also included. Wait, that's extended version of 72 minutes? Yeah. Uh, what, but, well, how long is the regular movie with all that going on? And just... <laughs> they pack a lot in. Some quick pace. They do. Uh, yeah. Bonus film, Ski Troop Attack, 1960, fully restored. Color booklet with essays by C. Courtney Joyner and Tom Weaver. Original production from Ballyhoo Motion Pictures covering mm-hmm. the film group. Original restored trailer from 35mm archival elements for Beast from Haunted Cave. What an old timey like name, Ballyhoo. Like, right, little... Hey, we're going to Ballyhoo Motion Pictures, yeah. kid. You're going to be a star. I'm going to put you in the pictures, kid. Yeah. You're going to be. It's going to be wonderful. It's going to be By a the way, I, I, This is probably my 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 ignorance here, but I was in, like shocked to see like the uh, a ski lift operating, uh, like in from night. I didn't realize they had ski lifts that long ago. I don't know. Show it shows how 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 uh, out of the ski lift. Um, Production. I you just guess, don't know. You you need to brush up on your ski lift history. Apparently, apparently. yeah. Um, anyway, uh, next one is again from Radiance Films. They're back. A visible secret from t- two thousand one. It says, "When Peter first meets June, he falls in love right away." Regarding her claiming of seeing ghosts, what? That doesn't make sense, does it? 
regarding her claiming of seeing ghosts with her right eye, a plain joke worth laughing at. What? I can't parse that right Did now. Did I read that right? No, yeah, I think you're right, but I think it's just it's, weird. That's weird? Okay. However, strange things soon happen, one after another, including his dad's suicide and June being chased by a group of gangsters. Sure. Were they the gangsters from the haunted cave? I, I know. They just, they, they've <laughs> survived 50 years later. Like They got off the ski lift. Uh, Peter's friend Simon, who has an accident, and to his surprise, Simon said it was Peter who pushed him off the staircase. Well, this is the first summary I've seen that's ended in a cliffhanger. It did. Like, we don't even know now. It's like they want us to see it. There's now. even a dot, uh, dot, dot. Yeah, this was an odd trailer. Not sure what's going on, but it's got a new conversation between Anne Hui and Naf <laughs> director Ken Smith, who also was on set for the original shoot. New visual essay by critic and programmer Alexander Heller Nicholas. Oh, wow. <laughs> she's like, I don't know what that role was a programmer, but uh, good for her. She she probably got tired of being that saucy little minx, so she decided to more appropriately uh, dress and do that. Uh, uh, archival making of documentary featuring interviews with the cast and crew behind the scenes footage from 2001. It's 14 minutes long, and there's also a trailer. And there's more. Keep scrolling. There's more. Oh wait, why was there such a space? Really? There's it, yeah, more? there's more. What happened? It oh, you're keep, right. It just keeps going. It was so big. I was yeah. uh, I was like, I had too zoomed in. Uh, new and improved English subtitle translation by Dylan Chung. Uh, re- reversible sleeve featuring original and newly commissioned artwork by Time Tomorrow. Limited edition booklet featuring new writing on the film and its place in the horror genre by Hong Kong horror cinema co-editor Gary Bittenson. Single pressing of 5,000 copies for UK and US presented in full height Scanavo packaging with removable Obi strip. <laughs> Obi, my little puppy. I don't know what that means. Uh, Obi strip, leaving packaging packaging free of certificates and markings. So I actually know what an Obi strip is because it's on Japanese record pressings, and it's oh, it, it's a um it's a strip of paper that goes around the album, and it's got oh. like all the information. So they're not having to put the information like on a sticker or anything on the album itself, and uh, it's just it's called the Obi strip, and it's got the whole. Well, thing. You know, that actually is a good description for that, because isn't an OB technically the thing that ties a kimono? Yeah, together? yeah. It's like a, so, it's yeah, like a okay, belt. So, so yeah. That's a, yeah. Look at us knowing so many things about OB. And it's funny, know? because like if the Japanese pressings supposedly sound really incredible. I don't own any Japanese pressings, but um, you know, when they sell them, it's worth less if it doesn't have the original OB strip with it. Oh. Well, I I know that like even on like CDs, like if you could get a Japanese import, the sound quality is amazing. And a, a friend of mine told me now, I'm, I'm, I, now take this with a grain of salt because I've never actually verified it. But from what I understand is over, you know, most imports, they they master it on as the way it's meant to be heard. And from, from what I understand, U.S. releases, they're so they they know that most people like to turn up the treble and turn up the bass and do that so they actually modify the recordings so that people could do that and it doesn't sound off now again take that with a grain of salt that was what my friend said he was big into sound he was huge on sound uh like with movies and 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 records and albums and cds so he was the one that told me that so if it's accurate that um well, it's kind of interesting they did that in the they did that in the um 90s when cds came out they did do that. They remixed them. And oh, like, it is okay. And, so and that's they, what. Yeah, that's what he was talking. And about. they would yeah. they would uh, remaster them like super loud, uh, and it really and like so they got a lot of distortion. So a lot of the CDs that came out in the early nineties were like were off from what they should be. Now, granted, uh, you see a lot of these. You you see plenty of albums that have been when they say remastered. It, a lot of times it's because they were remastered to to scrape all that crap they did in the nineties where they modified all the sound and stuff out. Um, so a lot of the stuff coming out now is remastered correctly because I think people have come back to, you know, I, th- I think people have come back to wanting the original sound now. But yeah, uh, yeah. but yeah, there was a big thing in the nineties with CDs like that. I watched the whole right, documentary, right. and that's when he was telling me basically. That yeah. was when I was I knew him was around that time. So okay, yeah. that makes sense. Um, next up is the Dark Power. This is from Kino Lorber from nineteen eighty five. The spirits of the dead Indians are haunting a couple's house, and they call in an exorcist whose trademark is a black whip to get rid of them. The Indiana yeah, so this is like dances with exorcists. <laughs> I guess. I guess it's like there's like American, uh, uh, you know, the Native Americans running around. Uh. And- I don't know. Uh, Very odd. New 4K restoration of the film from the original 16 millimeter camera negative. Audio commentary by director Phil Smoot. That is it. I love that name. Smoot. That's a great name. Audio commentary by cast and crew. The Terror of the Tar Heel State. That's me. 
Uh, I'm the Tar Heel State, North Carolina. You are? Yeah. Uh, featurette with director Phil Smoot and cast. I guess this takes place in North Carolina, I think? Hmm. Oh, maybe. I don't know. Uh, interview with editor Sherwood Jones, Image Gallery, and limited edition O-Card slipcase. Okay. Next one, speaking of exorcism, uh, we have Kino Lorber's Lorna oh, the Exorcist. It's which... a 1974. You look out. Here it goes. Yep, there you go. And it, the, I swear it sounds like it's an old A a and e show you know like the, you know like they had like the uh what was the long island medium yes now meet lorna the exorcist i could just see this like like this wacky old lady going like we're gonna get a lot of demons out today um anyway uh from 1974 it says a man is tormented by an ex-lover lorna who possesses a strange power over women including the man's daughter yeah that's all you get for the description and the trailer is literally a close-up of her face talking for 15 minutes oh my i don't God. even know what the heck was going on it was excruciating i couldn't even like deal with it uh, new audio commentary by novelist and critic Tim Lucas. Interview with act- uh, actress Pamela Stanford. Interview with filmmaker Gerard Kikoin. I don't know. There's like dots. I, was, I, I thought it was Kikoin. Like, Kikoin? It could be Kikoin. Kikoin. I like that one. Yeah, I'll say it that way. Kikoin? Uh, introdu- introduction by Stephen Thrower, author of Nightmare USA, The Untold Story of the Exploitation Independence. That actually sounds like an interesting book. Mm-hmm. I'd like to read that. He has some interesting uh, books. Yeah, he does, Stephen Thrower. Uh, limited edition, uh, O cover, uh, O card slipcase. All right, it's an O card, O cover. Come on, make up your mind, people. Uh, skipping our picks of the week here, we have Unearth Films Dead Girl, fifteenth anniversary from two thousand eight. Two high school boys discover an imprisoned woman in an abandoned mental asylum who cannot die. Uh, new interview with. Well, that's a lot of new stuff on it. Though. New interview with yeah. co-director Gotti Harrell. New interview with writer Trent Haga. New interview with actor Noah Segan. New interview with actor Shiloh Fernandez. New interview with special makeup effects artist and designer Jim Oyala. Ojala. New behind the scenes gallery. New extended makeup effects gallery. Audio commentary with cast and crew. Audio commentary by actor Jenny Spain. Exquisite corpse, the making of Dead Girl. Jenny Spain's audition. Deleted scenes, promotional stills gallery, and theatrical trailer. I don't think I've heard of this movie. I have not either. And it's interesting that it's like a, it's got such a, a you know like a like a signature release, but. Okay. But I mean, it, it doesn't look bad. Looks, looks kind of cool, actually. It's very artistic, you know. Looks like almost like like today would have been done by like A twenty four. Okay, okay, kind of thing. Uh, Visual Vengeance uh, releases Lichen Colony, uh, two thousand and six. This trailer, I don't. Know, this was like short and didn't make sense. Uh, some small towns hold many secrets. Two siblings and a newly settled doctor's family are about to find out this town's darkest secret. Darkest secret. A hard, the hard way. The town folk are good and evil. Well. well I can't speak. I'm trying to read it so fast that I can't even read it. <laughs> the town folk are good and evil werewolves, and all things are not as they appear. Uh, it's got an audio commentary with director Rob Roy. Audio commentary with Sam Panico of BNS About Movies, another podcast. I'm sure that that uh, stole our thunder. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, and Bill Van Ryan of Drive in Asylum. New 2022 interview with director Rob Roy. The full Rift Tracks version of Lycan Colony. That's always kind of funny. Yeah. Uh, blooper reel, Lycan Colony music video, original trailer, visual vengeance trailers, a four-page liner notes essay by Sam Panico, uh, uh, collectible uh, f- yeah. folded mini – I can't read tonight. Collectible folded mini poster, stick-your-own VHS sticker set, reversible Blu-ray sleeve, limited edition slipcase, first pressing only, limited edition New Hampshire forest scent air freshener. There we go. Hey. Finally, they're putting smells into these things. <laughs> They just need to be candles, and we're all set. Uh, first pressing only, though. You get that, the air freshener. Uh, okay, release number 17 from Paramount. This is a Paramount Scares compilation, volume 1, 4K, 1968 to 2022. This has four random movies in it. Uh, Rosemary's... Like, literally across the gamut. Yeah. Like, nothing is near each other uh, Rosemary, in terms of plot. Rosemary's Baby from 1968, Pet Cemetery from 1989, Smile from 2022, and Crawl from 2019. This is definitely one of those... Uh, Trying to capitalize on Halloween. You know, oh, well, pick that up for Halloween. It's got a bunch of horror movies on it. doesn't matter. If don't get me wrong. Planet. I love all four movies. They're great movies, there. but they're just, it's just a weird, yeah. really weird set. Uh, yeah. Disc one is Rosemary's Baby, which has Rosemary's Baby in retrospective, Mia and Roman, the actual trailer, and 50th anniversary Red Band trailer. Uh, disc two is Pet Cemetery, which has commentary by director Mary Lambert, Pet Cemetery Fear and Remembrance, Pet Cemetery Re- Revisitation. Stephen King Territory, The Characters, Filming the Horror, Galleries, Storyboards Introduction by Mary Lambert, Storyboards Behind the Scenes, and Marketing. Disc 3 is Smile, Commentary by Director Parker Finn, Something's Wrong with Rose, Making Smile, Files on the Wall, Inside the School, or Flies on the Wall, not Files. 
Uh, inside that, the score. <laughs> uh, the files are on the yeah, wall, damn it. If I could be a file on that wall. Yeah, I know. Uh, deleted yeah. scenes with optional commentary by director Parker Finn. Laura hasn't slept. Original short with introduction by director Parker Finn. And then finally, Disc 4 is Crawl. Intro to alternate opening. Alternate opening. Deleted and extended scenes beneath Crawl. Category 5 Gators. The VFX of Crawl. And Alligator Attacks. And, you know, I listen to my podcast in 3X. I don't know if anybody out there is listening to our podcast in 3X. because I, ha- I listen- What is that? What is like, I, like three x speed? Oh, three times the speed. Because I have so many podcasts, like that I could never listen to all of them if I listen to a normal thing. So I'm used to hearing the host talk super fast, and then I wonder, like, if you're listening to us reading these super fast, and you're listening to it on three x, this is like, brrr, like. Well, I don't know how anyone could listen to me on three x. I'm like already. St- I think I start at two x. I know it's like my normal. We would probably sound voice. like the Micro Machines guy from the '80s. Remember him? Oh yeah, the, no. That, the micro like, machine commercials. I, problem is, I can't like read that fast, so I can speak much faster than I read. So I have to kind of have it memorized if I really want to talk fast and make sense. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> but yeah. So these actually, I like. Uh, like I love the fact that these uh, f- four movies are being released again because they're all really good. And I have to say, uh, like uh, tied with probably Megan uh, Smile, they they had the best viral marketing. Those two movies. They really movies. did. Yeah. That was crazy. Um, okay, f- next one. Oh, God. We're almost at the end, guys. Hang on in there. We're almost there. Uh, next is Severin, Fil- Severin Films Zombie Holocaust 4K from 1980. It says, Dr. Peter Chandler. Chandler Bing! Sorry. <laughs> I, have to, I have to always say that when I hear Chandler. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Peter Chandler and a reporter named Lori <laughs> discover a rash of cannibalism in New York. I hate when that happens. I know. It itches so much when you get that rash of cannibalism. Oh, that was terrible. Okay. Soon the two have traced the cannibalistic activity to a remote island where they encounter a tribe of cannibals. No. What do you expect? You're, tra- you're tracing the cannibals. And what do you expect to find? So? Do you think so? I know. That's exactly what I think. Um, and a mad scientist who appears to be experimenting with reanimating dead corpses. The result of his work is four bloodthirsty zombies who roam the island and, along with the cannibals, wreak havoc on Laurie and Dr. Peter's expedition. Four. I've seen... Brad Pitt take on eight thousand of them, okay, <laughs> and he doesn't even look that tough. <laughs> this guy, these two, you can't take on four. That's your half of them. That's two. You each take two. <laughs> there you go. For God's sake. Anyway, uh, but apparently this is uh, when you watch the trailer. It's it might be known as Doctor Butcher Medieval Medical Deviant. Because <laughs> that, that's what it kept saying. Oh yeah, right there. Disc one, four K. Doctor Butcher MD feature and special features. There you go. Would have just looked an inch down. Uh, <laughs> The theatrical trailer, video release trailer, TV spot, uh, disc two is Zombie Holic. Oh, there's two. Maybe I watched the trailer for just the. Is it the I same know, movie I... or is it two different movies? I, I don't know. Oh. But there's like disc upon disc here. Uh, the 4K Blu-ray is Do- Zombie Holocaust feature and special feature and with a trailer. Disc three is Blu-ray and it's Dr. Butcher MD feature again, special plus special features. And that's Butchery and Ballyhoo. What does Ballyhoo with... keep coming I... up? What is with this? It's Ballyhoo's. It's orgies. This is the weirdest October ever. Uh, at butchery. It's like at butchery and Ballyhoo at the Milford Plaza. You see, you have to be a New Yorker to know that one. Cone is probably singing that in his head now as he's listening to it because he, he used to sing it normally. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, well, it was the Lullaby on Broadway was the real song. Yeah. So it, actually that had Ballyhoo in it. So that's what you know as. But anyone who lived or grew up in New York knew it as the Milford Plaza. That hotel stole that song. And did a whole thing. So anyway, sorry. A little New York history there. Uh, anyway, the four boroughs of blood, Rue Morgue's Michael Gingold, tours New York locations of Italian horror. That's actually really cool. I wish I knew that when I lived in New York for all those years. Yeah. I could have yeah, made a, made a uh, little tour of myself there. Uh, down the Deuce. Oh, down on the deuce. I don't know why I want to know that. But uh, anyway, no. <laughs> a nostalgic tour of 42nd Street with Temple of Shock's Chris Poggiali and filmmaker Roy Frumkus. <laughs> Frumkus. I feel like that's something they'd serve like at high tea, you know, like please enjoy our wonderful Roy Frumkus. Yeah. Uh anyway. Like that. Tales that tore our heart out. Filmmakers Frank Farrell and Brendan Faulkner discuss unfinished anthology film. Roy Frumkus segment of an unfinished anthology film, Tales That Will Tear Your Heart Out, with accompanying director commentary. The Butcher Mobile or Mobile, I don't know, depending how you want to say it. Interview with Gore Gazette editor and Butcher Mobile Barker Rick. <laughs> Wait, is Barker Rick his name, or is he a butcher mobile Barker, and his name is Rick? 
I don't know. I'm still laughing about Frumpkiss on a Frumpkiss. Uh, yeah, or does he just keep going like, hi, I'm Rick. <laughs> <laughs> like he's the barker. I don't know. Anyway. Cutting Dr. Butcher interview with e- editor Jim Markovic. We have not been drinking, I swear. No, I swear. I've literally been only on water. I'm just tired. Uh, illustrated essay, Experiments with a Male Caucasian Brain and Other Memories of 42nd Street by Gary Hertz. Okay. Uh, theatrical tra- I've been on 42nd Street back in the day. It's it's That very uh, makes sense there. Uh, like, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, theatrical trailer, video release trailer, and TV spot. Disc four. There are mm. still more discs to the set. Uh, Blu-ray, zombie holocaust feature, and special features. Voodoo Man, an interview with star Ian McCulloch. Blood of the Zombies, interview with FS- SFX master Rosario Prestopino. <laughs> That's a cool name, Rosario Prestopino. Prestopino. It does, like, it's like, Prestopino. It's like he uh, brings wine out of the Out, out of, of the ether, air, you know? yeah. Yeah, he does. He, just, he, like, puts his cup out and it fills up like Elijah. <laughs> Like the reverse Elijah. Elijah drinks. He he fills. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> See, you even get Passover tidbits on this show. Filmmaker Enzo G. Castellari remembers his father, director Mariano Girolami. Neurosurgery Italian style. Interview with SFX artist Maurizio Trani. <laughs> Sherry Holocaust. Interview with actress Sherry Buchanan. New York film locations 1980 and 2015. An audio bonus Ian McCulloch sings Down by the River. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is with this disc uh, trailer? Oh I need god. to. I think we need to get this just to find all what all these things oh are. Oh my god! Yes, and that's not even our pick of the week. We have two picks of the week. That's how crazy. Uh, that uh, next up was from Visual Vengeance: Vampires and Other Stereotypes from 1994. Two men in black wannabes who are not wearing black are. What? <laughs> that's what it says. Are, they're really not. They're not wanting very no, hard. I guess are on the lookout for ridding the planet of supernatural beings. After saving a crooked businessman in a warehouse, they are surprised by three pretty girls and a leather jacketed boyfriend who are searching for a party. <laughs> Evidently, they have unwittingly unleashed a kind of portal, endangering us all. Our heroes spend the night trying to survive as one of the three women has been targeted as a quote unquote breeder. She has apparently been chosen for being pretty tough. After all, she <laughs> does the equivalent of shrugging her shoulders after witnessing her businessman father getting horribly decapitated just inches away. That's very That specific. has got to be the weirdest description I've ever heard. Uh, new director supervised SD master from the One Inch Tape. Over seven hours of new bonus content. Good God. Wow. Audio commentary with director Kevin Lindenmuth. Audio commentary with actor <laughs> Mick McCleary and director Kevin Lindenmuth. <laughs> These names yeah. are killing me tonight. Yeah. I, uh, we're both tired and we're silly. Yes. Uh, audio commentary with Tony Strauss of Wings Chop Magazine. Uh, director Kevin Lindenmuth interview, actress Laura McLaughlin interview, actor Mick McCleary interview, actress Suzanne Turner interview, actress Sally Narcus interview. Make a- <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to do Narcus. <laughs> Narcus. <laughs> Makeup effects artist Rallis Khan inter- Khan! Khan! interview. Khan! I know, you uh, have to say it. <laughs> special Sorry. effects artist Scott Sliger interview. Photograph- photographer Sung Pak interview. Publicist Joe Borseri interview. Uh, oh my god! Uh, behind the scenes going. image gallery, Kevin Lindenmuth early. I never want to say Lindenmuth again. Oh my god! I know. Early Super Eight films, original trailer, Visual Vengeance trailers, six page liner notes by Tony Strauss of Wings Chop Magazine. Stick your own VHS sticker set, collectible folded mini poster, reversible sleeve featuring original VHS art, and first pressing mm-hmm. only a limited edition slipcase. Nice. Uh, the next one, MVD Visual. I mean, this title could have been on like half the titles we had tonight. Yeah. And this one is Vile from 2011. It says a group of friends stopped to pick up a hitchhiking woman only to end up getting drugged oh getting drugged by her with a gas. A gas. <laughs> Not gas. A gas. She just fart in the car. It says they awaken to find that vials have been implanted in the base of their skull, which are of course instantly fatal if they are removed. A grinning professional looking woman informs them on TV screen that they have twenty two hours to fill these vials with a specific amount of brain fluid. A fluid that is produced during times of extreme pain. Interesting plot premise. Yeah, a little it's kind of very sawish, yeah. But uh, but uh, it says, along with another group of unlucky test subjects, and with time ticking away, they decide to work together and share the burden of reaching their painful target. But it, this movie looks like something that would annoy me severely. I can't explain why, but if you just see the trailer, you'll know what I mean. Mm. But uh, anyway, it's high definition presentation of the main feature in 1 to 78 to 1 aspect ratio, deleted scenes, theatrical trailer, and reversible artwork. All right, next up is Caddy Hack. 
From Wild Eye Releasing, this came out this year. A struggling golf course suffers a string of caddy murders at the paws of pesticide mutated gophers. While the greedy owner of the facility tries to cover up the carnage and an unhinged groundskeeper wages all out war on the vicious vermin. Oh, wow, this is like a caddy hack. It's literally like a horror movie caddy version shack. of caddy yeah. shack. And do you know, like, I still remember this years ago. There was a point, I remember it was some guy interview. it was on our sports station, our 24-hour uh, sports at WFAN back, it was early in its infancy, and they interviewed a guy that bought out the rights, the merchandising rights to Caddyshack, which had expired, I guess, or mm-hmm. was it was non-existent. He bought it for $5,000 or something. Oh my like gosh. That. It was such a small amount. It was like, it was five, 6000 something like that. It was, I was like... They, they were like, are you kidding? He's like, he goes, how did you even know? And the guy, I guess the guy just explained that he sought out, like, I don't know what he did because it really wasn't Googling back then. I don't know. He must have, like, literally researched the hard way. And, like, we're finding movies that didn't have any kind of merchandising rights that he thought he might capitalize on. And now, you know, remember, there was this, there's a lot of Caddyshack merch you can find. Like, the, there was a stuffed gopher at one point. All the, I think the accounts for any kind of, like, things that come with the video releases. There were T-shirts. There was, um, I want to say there was a, a like a, like kind of like one of those Mego action figures. It was some kind of Caddyshack. Well, did they make, didn't Bill Murray make a whole, like, string of restaurants or something? Or? He might have, but I don't know if that's part of the license. I I don't know if that was an official Caddyshack license. Okay. It might have been. I don't know. Or he may have just – maybe the guy was Bill Murray in disguise. I don't know. It's like maybe Bill Murray sent someone in to buy it or something. You know, It was one of those like fake bidder things. Maybe – then again, guy has fi- buys 5000 Bill Murray offers him probably like 100000 without a blink of his eye. Wouldn't you be selling that? Yeah. <laughs> Make a, that huh. kind of a profit? Interesting. But anyway, yeah, keep it. Keep, remember this one, folks, for next year's uh, horror challenge, just in case. Never know. Yeah. Um, oh, I gotta do the extras here. Uh, director and producer commentary, outtakes and behind the scenes footage, old glory holes commercial, caddy rap, balls deep karaoke, brew break balls deep, brew break drink, brew break drinking game, illustrated slipcase art, and folded poster. Yeah, I definitely want to see that. I don't think I'm gonna buy it, but yeah. I'm gonna watch it. I don't even know how to say this, but I'm going to say Quattacook, <laughs> Vampire Umbrakel. Did I get any of it right, Tim? Umbrical. I want to say umbrical, like an umbrella course. Like umbrilical, an umbrilical yeah. course. And it's probably Vampire. I'm it's sure. probably, yeah, Quattacook. Quattacook. Yeah, I don't know if this is three movies, two movies, one movie. We don't movie, know what it is. But it says 1971 to 1972. I don't know if it's that long to watch that you need two years. <laughs> I but it's it's an interesting prop. But I will say that the uh, the the premise of this is cool. Think of this: it's an experimental film using stock footage of Jesus Franco's Count Dracula with atmospheric soundtrack to create a subversive experience. If you watch the trailer, that's what you're getting. It's like almost looks like almost a early found footage or pseudo documentary, but from 1971 when that wasn't even a thing. Hmm. So this is real. It's kind of really. I was like joking about it, but it's kind of really interesting. Um, anyway, uh, it's got a, uh, some cool features here. It's got a cinema of vampires. Uh, Pere Portabella, Jess Franco, and the School of Barcelona. Interview with Spanish film scholar Dr. Alex Mendibel. I, it was a little uh, tilde in there. I didn't see it at the last minute, so that's why the pronunciation was funny. Uh, trailer, and then it was a booklet featuring text by Pere Portabella and film critics Jonathan Rosenbaum and Frederico Kostolovich. I'm a fig, big. I'm a fig, I'm a big fan of. Uh... Harry Portobello's mushroom line. Yeah, it's very good. Uh, it's got some. All right, so that makes mushroom coffee, mushroom <laughs> tea. It's got it all. Uh, picks of the week. These are good ones. Uh, I, I changed mine at the last minute because this is one of my favorite anthology films of all time. Uh, release number fourteen here is from Kino Lorber. Uh, fourteen in terms of, we've actually covered twenty two, uh, but going skipping back to our pick of the week, Kino Lorber's Black Sabbath sixtieth anniversary from nineteen sixty three. A trio of atmospheric horror tales about a woman terrorized in her apartment by phone calls from an escaped prisoner from her past, a Russian count in the early 1800s who stumbles upon a family in the countryside trying to destroy a particularly vicious line of vampires. Of course, that's uh, got uh, Boris Karloff in it. And a 1900-era nurse who makes a fateful decision while preparing the corpse of one of her patients, an elderly medium who died during a seance. Uh, Has an audio commentary by novelist and critic Tim Lucas, theatrical trailer, newly encoded dual layer disc, and a limited edition O-card slipcase. Yeah, this one, this is a really cool movie if you have not seen it. And if you don't own it, this is a nice time to get it. Get it on uh, 60th anniversary. Yeah. It's not a million special features on here, but, you know. It's one of my favorites anthologies. Yeah. Yeah. 
yeah, you just need to have it. Plus, you know, anthology films, uh, you know, just in general back then are, are so cool. I love those. Like, what's that one we loved that you got me hooked on? Dead of Night. Dead of like, Night. Oh, yeah. Are, are really so good. good. Yeah. So finally, uh, the last one is by Synapse Tombs of the Blind Dead from 1972. It's my birth year, but here's one of the reasons why I picked it. So that movie I've told you about, I mentioned before, Free Enterprise. Uh, you know, it's that one with the two guys. They meet up with William Shatner, mm-hmm. and like he's like really weird. He plays himself, and he's a really like an obscure version of William Shatner. Uh, although now that real William Shatner is almost like approaching that. But uh, anyway, it's kind of funny. And so there's a sequence in there where one of the the main characters um, like meets this this like gorgeous girl that happens to be like this total like nerd like they are and like like into comics and movies and all these crazy things. And when he introduces him to some of his coworkers. She goes, "Hi, I want to eat you, but uh, meet you." Before, but before he like introduced himself, he goes, "Is it true that you like Tombs of the Blind Dead?" <laughs> and then she goes, "Yes, especially the part where they sacrificed a the virgin." He goes, "Dan Schweiger, nice to meet you." And that Dan Schweiger happens to be an actual his actual name, and we've mentioned him in this said film story because he's like some music uh, or editor. Uh, Oh. Uh, critic or something like that. He's done something here. I got to look him up what he does. But the actual Dan, the actual guy Dan Sh- uh, Schweiger is in that, and he uh, he's in that sequence. So, and I always laugh at that scene because it's like it's so funny. Like the poor girl's like trying to introduce herself, and like he literally the first thing out of his mouth is, "Is it true you like Tombs of the Blind Dead?" <laughs> and he says it like that way. It's kind of funny. Oh, that's great. So. Yeah. So anyway, uh, if you haven't seen this movie, uh, in the 13th century, I, I need to rewatch. I haven't seen this in a while, actually. In the 13th century, there existed a legion of evil knights known as the Templars who quested for eternal life by drinking human blood and committing sacrifices. Executed for their unholy deeds, the Templars' bodies were left out for the crows to peck out their eyes. Ew. Now, <laughs> now in modern day Portugal, a group of people stumble upon the Templars' abandoned monastery, reviving their rotted corpses to terrorize the land. This has got some great, great special features on here, and it is, uh, so I'll go through them first. A uh, new restoration of the film, audio commentary by Star Lone Fleming. Audio com- and it's funny, Lone Fleming is by all by themselves on this uh, <laughs> commentary. Uh, there's another audio commentary by Rod Barnett and Troy Gwynn of the Nashy Cast podcast. We'll forgive that one because yeah. any any podcast dedicated to Paul Nashy deserves yes. escalation. Uh, audio commentary by horror film historian and author Troy Howarth, which we don't need to mention. We've mentioned him a million times, all his things. And here's a long feature. It's Marauders from the Mediterranean, a feature-length documentary exploring the history of the Spanish zombie film featuring interviews with Night of the Living Dead writer-producer John Russo. Oh, hey. hello, John Russo. Uh, I helped him to the car, yeah. uh, to his car with uh, a whole bunch of stuff. What a sweet guy very though. sweet guy. i mean we always make that joke about how he comes with the new jersey horror con well he hasn't been there the last two uh hopefully he'll be there in march when we're planning to go again uh what a sweet guy though one of the just genuinely friendliest just kind mm-hmm. individual and like he did like he's like trying to lug like literally like boxes and cases down like the elevator into the parking garage and like we would not let him do that so i went with him to carry some stuff for him and help him wheel down some stuff and the whole way just thanking me along the way what a, he's what a very just, like, and he's, he's a hustler gem. i mean he's like you know i say that in a, a in the best way i mean he hustles like yeah he, he works the con he works his merch i mean he's really yeah. I, I respect people like that that are yeah, out there and he like stuff. gets around there yeah. he, he walks around he interacts with everyone yeah. just a, a genuine like gem of a of a part of the horror community so i highly you know and he's getting up there in age as you know so you know if he's at a con you may want to go see him before he just doesn't have the the oomph to go to these things anymore because yeah. they're 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 a slog i mean look we, we talked to brian bremer remember he even said yeah like how tired he gets and he's a young guy yeah and, you know, so and john russo he was even out there at karaoke and stuff i mean he's like, yeah, yeah he's doing like yeah I tell you, next time though, if he's there in March, we need to go up to him and buy him a drink. Yeah, we really do. If he drinks, yeah. if he drinks, if not, we'll get him a soda. Yeah. Whatever he wants. I, 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 he's one of my favorite people we met there. Uh, anyway, uh, the Stegus uh, Film Festival deputy director Mike Hostench. I don't know if Hostench, Hostench. Oh wait a minute. Now if you read it that way, I don't know if I want to talk about any Hostench. Uh, <laughs> film critic John Martin, academic Callum Waddell, The Living Dead at Manchester Morgue director. Jorge Grau, Tombs of the Blind Dead star Lone Fleming, actors Helga Line, oh, Line, sorry, there's a little <laughs> tilde there too, Manuel de Blas, Antonio Mayans, and Jack Taylor, Paul Nashi's son, hmm. Sergio Molina, 
author, film critic Kim Newman, and academic writer Steve. Kim Dome. Newman just inserts himself in every extra now, everywhere. everywhere, everywhere. He just talk about it. he comes with the extras yeah. like it's just like I think he's like the default. Yeah. Uh, and every time I see Steve Jones, I think I know this is so random, but really not. If you know how my wine works and mine works, and I think that you do. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, uh, you remember uh, Zach and Miri uh, make a porno? Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, there's the part where um, they're interviewing everybody, and Jason Mew goes, "I get a porn." And he goes, "What's your name?" And he goes, Lex- "Lester the Molester Cock and Stuff." <laughs> and he goes, "What a great porn name!" And he goes, "I could have a porn name, okay." Pete Jones. <laughs> <laughs> and I just like every time I cannot get through that scene without laughing because, of course, Jason Mewes yeah, is just it's hilarious. comedic timing is so good, like the way he says stuff. But like just the way he does it and Seth Rogen's reaction, just classic, classic stuff. Anyway, sorry. Little sidetrack. Uh, then there's Revenge of Planet Ape, an alternate U.S. opening sequence. Hmm. <laughs> OK. Awakening of Spanish Horror Cinema featurette, Salem's Pop Templar Tears music video. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, that's interesting. Uh, original theatrical trailer, still gallery, and Blu-ray Disc 2 has the re-edited U.S. theatrical cut of the film. Probably means it's worse. Exactly. <laughs> I was about to say that. It means it's inferior. All right. So to recap that crazy week of October 24th, we had The Others 4K from 2001, Red Dragon 4K from 2002, uh, Cujo 4K 40th Anniversary from 1983, Messiah of Evil from 1973, It the Terror from Beyond Space from 1958, Meg 2 The Trench 4K from 2023, Fascination 4K from 1979, Lips of Blood 4K from 1975, Beast from Haunted Cave from 1959, Visible Secret from 2001, The Dark Power from 1985, Lorna the Exorcist from 1974, Dead Girl 15th Anniversary from 2008, Lycan Colony from 2006, Paramount Scares Volume 1 4K from 1968 to 2022, that of course includes four releases, Zombie Holocaust 4K from 1980, Vampires and Other Stereotypes from 1994, Vile from 2011, Caddy Hack from 2023, and Kwatakuk Vampire Umbracle double feature from 1971 1972. Our picks of the week Brian picked Tombs of the Blind Dead from 1972, and I picked Black Sabbath 60th Anniversary from 1963. That leaves only one more release uh, October 31st. That, that actually, Halloween falls on a Tuesday this year, and they did not release any mm. horror releases. Uh, I guess they said, you know what, Halloween's over, time to get the Christmas stuff rolling. So they only released one horror title, but it's a Criterion version of this, which it's is a Criterion, really, which is which I, pretty impressive that this movie is getting a Criterion release. It's very relatively new. Yeah, this one, uh, but it's really good. Yeah. One of my favorites from last year, actually. I don't, yeah, I remember this one, and because um, uh, I think Anna Diop was uh, up up for a Fangoria Chainsaw. Yeah, yeah, I think we both really like this one. Um, obviously, this is our default pick of the week because it's the only yeah. release this week. Uh, it's Nanny from uh, again twenty twenty two. Uh, Aisha, an immigrant nanny, piecing together a new life in New York City while caring for the child of an Upper East Side family, is forced to confront a concealed truth that threatens to shatter her precarious American dream. A uh, new 4K master approved by director Nick Yatu Jusu with 5.1 surround DTS HD master audio and uncompressed stereo soundtracks. New program featuring Jusu, actors Anna Diop and Michelle Monaghan, and director of photography Rena Yang. Trailer and an essay by critic Angelica Jade Bastian. And I really I really like the theme of this one because I think it explored something a lot of people may not know about. Like, I certainly didn't know that there was this whole, like, subset of these nannies that came from overseas and kind of this whole thing. I didn't know there was this whole thing. Of, and that, that's a, that, that was a yeah, thing. Well, I grew up in New York. I was familiar with seeing a lot yeah. of it. You know, I, I didn't... Uh... You know, we, you know, like, as, you know, we didn't have one. I didn't have a nanny as a child. But, you know, um, like... You know, but but I knew people that did, and it was very. You know, I actually knew, like, you know, I mean, you, you know, nannies are just, you know, can be any kind of from anywhere. But I'm just saying, like, you know, a lot, a lot of ones, most of the ones you see in movies are portrayed. They're usually like British, you know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> British yeah, nannies are yeah. coming in, or Jewish ones from Queens, like Fran Dresser, you know, Mister Sheffield, <laughs> you know. But uh, but it's not that nanny. It's a but. There's no. But all all kidding aside, this was a great great film, and Anna Diop was. I mean. So many people deserved that the chainsaw last year for performances. That was she probably got kind of lost in the shuffle because of of her not being as having the same notoriety as some of the other big ones mm-hmm. in there. But definitely do not if you haven't seen this movie yet, definitely give it a watch. I think it was on Shutter for a while. It may still be. Yeah. Um, but definitely go check that out if you haven't seen it yet. Really good movie. And I this may be actually one that I pick up on when they have the Criterion sale. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, lot, lots of good Criterion releases this month. So um, we'll be back here next month, of course, for our November releases heading into the holiday season. And we hope you enjoyed this rundown of our crazy packed October. Uh, before my voice gets too shot, because we still got a little bit more recording to do, we'll head on yeah, out. Just a little. And uh, we'll see you back here next month. See y'all.